name's Firefighter Matt. We got Firefighter Dan on the camera. And we're gonna give you guys a virtual tour today. Unfortunately, with COVID and all the craziness with the pandemic, we can't have you guys here to do the normal tours that we would. So instead, we're gonna bring you in and still show you what the station looks like, all the guys and the equipment within. So come on in. So today we're at the Joint Fire Department Station number six. It is one of our busiest firehouses within the city. And as you can see, it is obviously a working firehouse. Our shifts are 24 hours. We start at 7 a.m. And for the first part of the day, it's about cleaning the vehicle, making sure all of our equipment works, and making sure it's ready for our next call. We're gonna go to the main part of the fire station. It's the most important part of the fire station for firefighters. It's where all the world's problems are solved. Come on into the kitchen. The question here is, who gets our food? Who pays for our food? Well, we all pay for our food. Every firefighter has to pay in the money. We all chip in for it. And then one firefighter has to go and do all the shopping. They're in charge for all the food, making lunch and dinner. And then that rotates. So you have to know how to cook. We have the biggest critics here in the fire service. They'll let you know if the meal's bad. We always sit together for lunch and dinner. We always come together. We are a family. It is the brotherhood and sisterhood. We all sit around together watch TV, have a good home-cooked meal, and ready for the next call. Next, we're gonna go over and we are gonna take a look at our TV room. From seven in the morning to seven in the morning the next day, that's our shift, it's a 24-hour shift. But the first part of that shift, really from seven in the morning to about three or four o'clock, we have to be doing stuff. It's cleaning, checking the rigs, making sure the equipment works, we're running calls, we're training. But once our day is done, much like a day after school, we'll come in here, we have the ability to sit down, relax if we can between calls, watch some TV. Now we're gonna go see the officer's room and check out the living quarters as well. Every station within the city of Joliet has a person who's in charge, most like your teacher. Today over here, as you can see, as you come into the room, we've got Captain Paul here, who's the, uh, he's the firefighter in charge today. Hi, I'm Paul Yannick. I'm one of the three captains here at Station 6. And this is where I work. Right over here this way is the officer's quarters where uh, we're able to get some rest after uh, overnight in between calls. Now kids, those of you who are sports fan, don't fault Captain Paul. He doesn't know better. He's a Broncos fan, not a Bears fan. Maybe one day we'll get him converted to be a Chicago fan. All right guys, we're gonna head over to the next room now. All right, Matt, that brings us to a very important question I have here for you. Do we get to sleep? So, we do. This is our home. We live here for 24 hours a day. We have to sleep in one giant room, which, to be honest with you, it can get a little uncomfortable, especially when you have the snore. Come on in, guys. You can see it's one giant open room. We all sleep in the same room. We all have our own bedding. Much like at home, like your mom and dad might say, you have to make your bed. Come on in, we'll show you the workout room. So the workout room is one of those places where guys will come in and they'll work out for about an hour a day, whatever they can. So I know you're Wow. And as you can see right here, we've got the man, the myth, the yeah, legend. Job, guys. Firefighter Kevin getting his workout. Great job on those thousand curls, Kevin. You look great. Dedication is what we have here at the Joy Fire Department. Fantastic. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the vehicles and we'll also check out to see where the firefighters keep their gear. This is where all the firefighters keep their gear when they're off shift. Now let's take a look at the vehicle. What makes this station unique is we have tower ladder. Now we have fire engines that do not have a big ladder on top and those are for putting out the fire. And we do have ladder trucks which have a big ladder on top, much like this one. We call this one a tower ladder because it has a big basket on the top. 
And that is really important so that if we have high rises or anything else, we're able to grab the victims and help them get down through this basket. Alright guys, we have Firefighter Brian here now, and he's going to help show how we look different when we have to get dressed for a fire. You know, we, we wear these clothes for our station, but when we go into a fire, we have to be wearing special equipment. And we start to look different, and we're going to sound different. So the first part is, we can't wear our boots inside of our boots. They won't fit. So first, Firefighter Brian's going to take off his shoes, and go ahead and start to get dressed by putting his feet inside the fire boots. All right, so now he's got that done. Now we're gonna go ahead and start getting the rest of the part on. He's gotta protect his neck. In order to do that, we have to put on a special hood. So once he has that on, now we're gonna go ahead and get the fire cord on. As you can see, Firefighter Bryant, his chest and his arms, his leg, his feet, and his neck are all protected so far. Now we're going to go ahead and get the air pad down. Here, all the noise and bells are starting to go off to let him know that air pack is working. Firefighter Bryant can also take a look to see exactly how much air he has on his air pack. Now, Firefighter Bryant can sit really still. There's a special feature inside these air packs and what's called a pass device. And what it does is it starts to have an alarm that goes off once the firefighter is still for 30 seconds. And that's important because if we get hurt and if one of us falls down and can't get back up or something collapses on top of us, it's important for all of us to be able to find it. So now you can hear Firefighter Brian, his alarm starting to go off and it's gonna get louder and louder until we call it the firefighter shake. He starts to shake and it turns off because it senses him moving again. So, if you see us on the scene and you see a bunch of firefighters doing it, it's not a new TikTok dance. He's actually just deactivating the alarm. He's got his mask here, so we'll pull the mask off so you can see what that looks like. And it's already hooked up. And this is where Firefighter Bryant's gonna be able to breathe. Now, when we put this on, this is where the firefighter's gonna sound different. So, maybe Firefighter Bryant can say hi right now. Hello, hi. Sounds completely normal, right? So Firefighter Brian is going to go ahead and put the mask on. Now say hi, Firefighter Brian. Hello. So his voice is already starting to change, right? So before we get in there, he's going to go ahead and get his helmet on. Last thing we need to do, you can see his hands are not protected. We need to go ahead and put his gloves on first. You can already tell Firefighter Brian looks completely different. But he's still the same firefighter that you saw beforehand. So it's important to remember not to be scared and we don't ever hide. The last thing he's going to do before we go into the fire is he's going to go on air. Now, when he goes on air, he's going to sound a lot like Darth Vader. Can you hear him breathing? Hello. Now, now go ahead and say hi, Firefighter Brian. Hello. My name is Brian. So it's really hard sometimes to hear him. And if we come inside your room and it's on fire, we don't want you to hide. He may not be able to see you because of the smoke. And he may be really hard for you to understand him because the way he's talking with the air. So instead, if he doesn't see you, grab him, kick him, do whatever you need to do to get his attention, but don't ever hide. It'll make it harder for Firefighter Brian to find you, okay? So, Thank you, Firefighter Brian. We appreciate it. Big help. We thank you guys all for coming out and seeing us. We wish you could have done this in person, but unfortunately we can't. So we hope to see you guys soon. Stay safe and take care.